where are the low value men? Like, what are what are all the low value men up to during these trying times? Because the high value men, they, I know they're around. They won't shut the fuck up. Low value men, I have not heard a word out of. I'm starting to think I'm on their side. I think I want one of those. I want a low value man. They don't make podcasts. I haven't seen one low value man make a podcast. Do they not know how to use microphones? Maybe that's a good thing. That's that's hot. All right. I haven't seen. I've never seen a man use a microphone for good. Until now, everybody buckle up. It's low value mail time with your host, Danny Polish Chuck. What's happening, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back to episode 101 of Low Value Mail, the greatest call-in show that has ever existed in the history of the internet, and maybe the world. Uh, It's possible that it might be the whole world. Uh, Welcome back, everybody. This is the final, final Tuesday episode of low value mail. That's it. After this week, we're going to Mondays. Starting next week, we will be Mondays at 9 p.m. So you'll need something else to do with your Tuesday nights. Lucky for you, the bathhouse is now going to be on Tuesday nights. So at 9 p.m., not 1030. So the bathhouse is going to be on 9 p.m. This show's moving to Mondays at 9 p.m. Uh, I do not want to hear from you being like, I'm confused. What? When are the shows? Uh, Sometimes people get confused. It does happen. Um, So anyways, please, before we start, like and subscribe. Uh, Do all those things for me. It would be much appreciated. Uh, Leave a review. Just all that stuff. Also, we have an after show tonight. Our our after show, we will be getting into it tonight. After It's called the after show because it's after... After the show. Um, so, yeah, there's that going on. Um, what else is there? Oh, yeah, we'll have a new episode of The Bathhouse, God willing, tomorrow. We've had a tough stretch with The Bathhouse. We've we've had to cancel three of the last four shows. Last week, uh, Dave Chappelle was at the stand, and uh, he doesn't like to share the green room. Unfortunately, so anyways, hopefully moving to Tuesdays, we'll fix things uh, in that regard. It'll definitely be much better that it's at 9 p.m., um, but we will have a new episode tomorrow, Wednesday, 10.30 p.m. Uh, Runaway Slav says, Christ is king. King of the gays. No, I'm kidding. Uh, anyways, I mean, he technically is king of them, plus everybody else, if that's if that's what you believe. So. You guys are talking about bathhouse. What time is bathhouse at the new date? 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Tuesdays is the new time for the bathhouse. But today's Tuesday. So then tomorrow is Wednesday at 10.30 p.m. But going forward, Jews are gays. <laughs> the ones I know are. Uh, also, if you want to catch me live, I'll be in Fairfield, Connecticut, April 13th, Hamilton, Ontario, April 19th, 20th, Dallas, Minneapolis, Edmonton, Vancouver, DannyComedy.com or DannyJokes.com. It's both. Uh, so that's what we got. That's what we got going on here. Uh, it's open lines, everybody. It's open lines. It's your show. It's not your show, but you know what I mean? It's, it's you know, I, I think sometimes we have these guests and the guests are very specific topic wise. Uh, so I'm sure sometimes you have some things you want to discuss, but maybe not the greatest venue because you don't want to call in and talk about uh, something unrelated to the show. Although some of you do want to call in and talk about things unrelated to the show. But there's a lot going on right now. We got uh, this this little Baltimore bridge collapse, which I will say, look, I love a good conspiracy. All right, we got uh, we got our first call of the night. One moment, please. Hello. You are on Low Value Mail. Who am I speaking with? Yo, Danny. It's Maurice. Maurice. How's it going, man? Long time. How you been? Uh, I'm doing really good. How have you been? I have been very good. I was actually just out in uh, your way this weekend in Colorado. How was it for you? Well, that that was with all the snow and everything too. 
Oh, I didn't see any snow. I was in Colorado Springs. I was moderating oh, okay. the uh, Libertarian Party's um, state convention, like presidential debate. So I guess like how did that go? It, it, it sounds weird to be honest. It was weird. It, it you know what? It was cool. It was like an interesting thing to to experience, I suppose. Um, yeah. Like, it's so weird because the libertarians, like, there's this one guy, Jacob Hornberger. So not everybody who's running for president came, but I think, like, five of the main ones. And then this one uh-huh. guy, Jacob Horn, like, some of them are wacky. Like, some of them um, are, like, this guy, Jacob Hornberger, is like, we should have no borders at all. He's like, no borders. I'm like, dude, like, the, like I like the libertarian stuff. I honestly agree with a huge percentage of it, but then they'll say these things where you're like, nobody is yeah. voting for you. If you say that, like, yeah. once and you then you kind of like, get embarrassed. Like, come on, man. Like I'm like, I'm here with you. Well, not, not even that. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm just a bystander at that point. So I'm just watching the thing, but it's interesting because on paper, the libertarians should be doing so much better. Like the Jacob Horner. Yeah. He kept, he kept saying, he's like, we're not even polling at 1%. He's like, we're currently polling at zero. Like his whole thing. He's like, we got to do crazy shit. Cause he's like, we're polling at 0%. He's like, if we say we're going to be tough on borders, well, he's like, well, the Republicans are doing that anyway. So why would they vote for us? So then they're kind of coming at it from this standpoint. Uh, Oh, okay. I'm like, well, we got to be crazy. And you're like, well, nobody's going to vote for you then either. But there is something weird about it because they're, I guess it's just, you know, this country cannot handle a third party, really. Just it's, you know, it's just in that binary uh, kind of thing. Yeah, uh, it would I, be that I'm excited to see what RFK numbers do. I don't know. I don't, I hate his pick for uh, his vice president. VP. His yeah. VP, yeah. He announced it today. That chick who's like Sergey Brin's or like one of the yeah. founders. Yeah. She, she's the one that did the Super Bowl commercial and all that. I think so. I don't know. But anyways, he, he's he, like, again, it's one of those things with him is he, he, he definitely has lost momentum. It feels like, uh, yeah. And so I, I don't think he'll play a part. I think he'll actually, if I had to guess now, he'll actually on, on uh, election day do really poorly, like single digits. Cause he was polling at like 20% for a minute, but yeah, he was up there for a while. Yeah. But I think now when it comes to election day, people are going to be like, what is the point of voting for him? Cause there is that. And that's what the libertarians get fucked on is people go to vote for them. And they're just like, what is the point of voting for you guys? You guys are going to lose. And all they talk about is how they're like, I mean, so the thing is some of them, there's this one guy, Chase Oliver, who probably the better uh-huh. best candidate. And he, he uh, ran for Senate in uh, Georgia and like okay. Did, did okay and like uh, anyways he, he did i don't he didn't win but he forced like a runoff so it was that was something i guess that was a win for the libertarians but he doesn't concede that he can't win whereas like many of the candidates are like we have no chance of winning <laughs> <laughs> like he's just, uh, does canada like, have a are they multi party or is it kind of like america canada is multi party canada no canada has uh two main well canada has three main parties actually there's uh, canada's okay. weird actually there's the liberals, the conservatives, which are like Democrats, Republicans. Then there's the NDP, National Democratic Party, which is like the far left. Then there's uh-huh. the Bloc, Bloc Québécois, which they represent Quebec because Quebec fancies themselves like requiring a totally different set of issues, I guess. And so they have a totally different party, uh, Bloc Québécois. I don't think Bloc Québécois has ever won because like they swe- they run it in Quebec, but outside of Quebec, they're just not... Uh, like people in you know British Columbia aren't voting for the Quebec government to be the prime minister, but uh, yeah, so there's basically three parties. But like, if you go to a vote, there's like you know probably eight parties or something. There's the Green okay, yeah. Party. There's like the Marijuana Party. I don't know if that exists anymore. Damn. Um, yeah, I feel like yeah. it would require way too much effort for America. How many parties are on a ballot party. when you when you go vote in America? How many parties are on that ballot? Because obviously the Libertarians are on, so it's it's more than two. Well, it depends where you are because each state has different ballot requirements. So get right, right, right. I forget that. Yeah, because in Canada, you're actually voting for the prime minister. Here, you're just yeah. voting for your. So uh, I'm in Colorado, and our our uh, ballots were going to get printed too. So it was a huge thing with the whole Trump being on the ballot or not on the ballot, or he's going to be on but not under the presidential heading. Right. 
Yeah. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but it seems like it's just it's going to be Trump, but Biden, and it's going to be it. And assuming that Trump's oh, not I? not in jail or something, and then I guess he can even still run, even if he is. Did you see the evaluation that Truth Social got? I yeah, I've been kind of following that. Uh, it doesn't really make any sense, uh, but none of it did. But. Uh, Oh, they got, they actually have the ticker is DJT. Yeah, which is, so they're, Hilarious. from what I read, their total evaluation as a, for their market cap is a little over $6 billion. Uh, but a lot of that evaluation, Donald Trump owns 60% of the company. Just yeah. Outright. Yeah, he owns, that's why he hasn't been, I mean, handed to him for holding off as long as he did, because that was essentially the plan why everybody's like, why won't he go to Twitter? And probably like his deal was you're like, well, you own 60% of the company. Why would you be going posting on a competitor's site? But I think they said something like they have $5 million of revenue or something like microscopic or 5 million. Super small. Even their uh, daily active users are super small. Dude, it sucks. It's like the uh, I don't even know you. You just have to be like a diehard MAGA Republican, like Trump. Yeah, sycophant, that sycophant to use that site because it's it's not good. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The only time I ever see Trump post something is when people screenshot it and post on somewhere else. Yeah, like, I wonder no, like, like who's going to that website. Yeah, I'm curious what the kind of yeah exactly. You see screenshots of it all the time, but it's only screenshots of Trump's post. Like you don't see mm -hmm. a single other screenshot of anybody else's post other than his. I don't. I'm curious what kind of look, like. I, I guess they're saying it could become like a meme stock if everybody goes and if every I could like, see that if every Trump supporter goes and drops like a hundred or two hundred dollars in shares. Eight like if eighty if the how many votes did they say he got eighty million or something? Oh, we lost him. All right. I don't know what happened there. We lost Maurice. Um, but yeah, they got 80 million and then everybody goes and puts drops a hundred bucks. That's uh $8 billion in, in, but I don't know if everybody's going to do that. Obviously um, very likely they won't, but anyways, uh, let's see what's going on in the chat. Gerard says I get nonstop Trump tech spam. Apparently. Well, I mean, they need money. They need money very, very badly. Um, very badly. I saw something with uh, who is it? Giuliani was talking about it today. Someone overheard him at Mar-a-Lago saying how his life is like a living nightmare, and he's about to go bankrupt. And there, everybody who uh, is involved with him is getting fucking destroyed. In uh, I mean, they're 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 throwing the kitchen sink at him. That is for sure. That is uh. There's no question they are absolutely coming after him and they're coming after him uh, hard. You know, apparently his current case, I guess the Stormy Daniels hush money case starts April 15th and he's got to be in court like every day for that. That's not the kind of thing where, he, you know, he can just send someone a lawyer like that one. He actually has to be in court every day. So I wonder, I guess he doesn't, I don't know if this does the campaigning for him. Like, does this just cover his campaigning? He goes, I don't really need to campaign because I'm just going to get covered in the national news every single day. I don't know. By the way, if you want a wrench, which uh, the wrench is usable in the uh, after show to post links and stuff, uh, you can sign up at patreon.com slash low value mail to support the show or just join the channel. There's a join button somewhere around. Um, and you can join it. And the phone lines are open. one 949 2969 I almost forgot it for a second. But yeah, a lot going on. There's uh, all this Trump business. We got that crazy sh shooting in Moscow. It is interesting being on Twitter, seeing all this stuff happening. And then just because I follow a lot of people who are conspiracy minded. And here's the thing. E like uh, This is what I was saying before Maurice called. But, you know, I, I like a good conspiracy, obviously. I like a good conspiracy, but not everything's a conspiracy. They're not all, surely they can't be a uh, conspiracy. By the way, shout out to everybody watching over on Rumble. Yeah, like everything can't be a, a conspiracy. Also, like the stream, please. Uh, Red Bar is watching. Red Bar, I don't care about Red Bar. Nobody cares about Red Bar. What is, what is Red Bar going to do, really? I would love Red Bar to call in. Mike, if you're watching. If Red Bar is in fact watching, Mike, call in. 
one triple eight nine four nine two nine six nine. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. He he covered us some. Everybody cares so much about Red, Red Bar, or some people do. I don't give a shit about Red Bar. All right, we got a call. Hello, welcome to Low Value Mail. Hi, man. My name's Jack. I'm uh, I'm wondering. I keep hearing you interview these different conspiracy theorists. Yes. And sometimes it seems like you really believe them, and other times it seems like you're sort of uh, playing along with the narrative. And well, I'm wondering, I, like, what conspiracies do you really believe? What conspiracies do I really believe? Uh, like, in terms of ones that are, like, really far out there or or just in Yeah, general? yeah. Like, like, do you think I RFK... Think, here's the thing. I think in uh, probabilities, I think in probabilities, I don't, like, so I wouldn't that's say... That's good. I wouldn't say that I'm, like, totally. 100% on anything that, like, is difficult to actually prove. But I'd say high probability, like, JFK... Low probability or medium probability that the moon landing was a hoax, uh, which okay. I, I would have been two years ago. I would have been zero on that. So I've come around to that. I'm like zero percent flat Earth. Uh, let's see what else. Um, yeah, I don't How know. How do you the, feel the, about RFK? What's the conspiracy with RFK? Well, the thing about RFK is uh, the FBI removed um, part of a door frame which uh, had bullet holes going the wrong direction. It seems like there were too many bullets shot. Oh, this uh, R oh, R Sirhan, not RFK Sirhan. Jr. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, his dad. His dad. Yeah, yeah. And so the problem with that one for me is that in order to believe that Sirhan Sirhan was not the one who shot RFK. I sort of have to believe that MK Ultra is capable of mind controlling people to like act out a script where they shoot in a certain direction, right? And that's right. like that's a big leap for me, but it still seems like it's the case, which is crazy. Are those now are I was those wondering the, if you had an opinion about that one? Well, I would say are those the only options? You know what I mean? Like is was it only an MK Ultra like I mean, the CIA killing I mean, killing him and his brother, JFK, seems pretty plausible, like the stuff that they can kind of get away with. Yeah, totally. But but the RFK thing, uh, we have uh, Sirhan Sirhan not remembering what's going on. Um, and you kind of have to explain that somehow. The other ways I can think of explaining it are like uh, that he is trying to act like he didn't have knowledge of the plot, but he was actually involved in the plot uh, anyway. But if you're like positing a whole second shooter, it's hard for me to figure out uh, how to explain this without some sort of weird MK Ultra stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've done, a, I don't know about the whole like con making someone controlling them to that sense. Uh, where it they can... sounds far fetched. I know. Yeah, it does sound far fetched. Yeah, I, that I don't know about, but I could definitely see the government or you know certain three letter. What about what about aliens, about... UFOs, little green men? How do you feel about uh, those? I think the probability. I kind of go back and forth on that one. I think the probability, like based on Same. probabilities, you think that they should have to exist in some capacity. Um, I think aliens somewhere should have to exist. It they must. I don't know that they have to it be visiting. Be... Yeah, they don't have to be visiting, but it would be mental to think that, you know, how vast the solar system is in the universe that it's just us. That just, I, that's my th kind of thought there. It just seems unlikely based on that, that there's this like insane, you know, we're literally like a speck of dust, this planet in the entire universe. I hear you there. I do. Yeah. I, I always have a problem with the little green men being like bipedal and having two eyes. They look like way too human to me. And that yeah. feels like a psyop or like a DMT experience or something. I kind of agree on like that. I don't know how we, I don't know how we just agreed that that's what aliens look like. I'm sure someone maybe knows there's some sort of uh, yeah, there's like, like a science fiction uh, sort of uh, like why can't they be plants or something? Why yeah. can't they be dogs? I don't know. Like well, they, they could be anything. Octopuses like, would be uh, way more believable to or me. Or bird. I mean, crabs. I mean, Things or, keep evolving into crabs. Or birds, and they could just fly around surveilling us, and we'd be none the wiser. You know. That could be, man. That could be what's going on. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But in terms of like the super far out ones where people like came on and told, because that's the thing. I just am interested in conspiracy theories. I don't believe them all. I believe some of them, but I don't believe them all. But I do like listening to someone who's like all in on a thing. Tell me about it. You know, I agree, man. I've, I've really been enjoying your podcast. Thanks for taking my call. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm trying to think of all the conspiracies we've covered. You know, some of the I like some of the Jewish conspiracies. I do really like a lot of the a lot of my Twitter. Like there's all these people who just like everything just goes to Israel, like Baltimore, the bridge collapsing, the thing getting shot up. Just every single one of them just instantly. Oh, we got producer Mark on the line. Producer Mark. Producer Mark. Yo, what is happening? Oh, we got producer Mark on the line. Producer Mark! On the line. Oh. You got, you got that? Hello? Hello? Hey, what's up? Hello? Hey, what's up? I can hear you, but I can hear myself. There's I can like hear an you, echo. But I can hear myself. There's like an echo. Oh, hold on. Hold on. How about hold now? On. Uh, I think that's fine. All right. Yeah, right. I just wanted to address the, the alien uh, point that was just made. Yes. So there are plenty of sci-fi, well, first, as you said, there's plenty of folkloric depictions of what you could call otherworldly entities. But the first, let's say, depiction of what we now call a gray alien was drawn by none other than Aleister Crowley after he claimed to have done something called the Amalantra workings so he really did this so he was the first person he was the one yeah, who kind of mainstream that so it, well you can look at it in a couple different ways so you could consider it uh the way crowley said it which is he said that he did a ritual and interacted with an actual being right then okay. maybe you can be a little bit more suspicious of crowley considering he was a secret agent working with the british military and you might say oh well they took this intelligent officer who was kind of colorful, had a weird sort of, um, you know, poly mathematic approach to the occult. And they used that idea in this sort of weaponized folklore way to throw all of the uh, attention away from the military's deep black budget projects by saying, oh, it must be Martians. It must be Jupiterians. It must be Venusians. And then they, you know, tell us what the planets are and after World War II, and they're like, oh, wow, no, no, no. They come from Zeta Recticula. They come from you know, beyond the Kuiper Belt or whatever, right? So yeah. there's multiple ways you could look at it, and then there's a third way you could look at it, which is these are demons, and that's why an occultist like Crowley summoned them, and now they are, you know, working with certain groups of people, maybe – aligned with the U.S. military to do who knows what. I mean, you hear certain alien encounter stories, and it sounds like genetic testing. You hear others, and it sounds like possession. Some just sound like bullshit, and I think there's a, a reason for those stories, too, is to muddy the water so much. that. I mean, uh, I was know, just going to say that, yeah. Makes- I, I do wonder about the degree to which, because sometimes people probably – just want a little bit of fame and maybe they'll, that's why they'll make up a story. Cause obviously they're not all true. Is it, there is some weird thing. I don't know if there's any truth to this, but I believe it is where like most, a majority of all the UFO uh, sightings in the world are in America or like North America. Yeah, there's a ton in South America. I think the most get reported in uh, let's say America, because there are actual organizations here, but there's, I mean, there's organizations all over the world that research UFOs. So I wouldn't say that. Well, I just uh, meant the actual there is sighting, a ton sighting on the 33rd parallel. God, what, what's the significance of that? Well, the 33rd parallel, uh, uh, North, which is 33 degrees above the equator goes through the, majority of the southern half of the United States and it goes through the majority of the landmass on the planet 
Uh, it's like a band between the 33rd and like the 45th parallel. That's where the majority of the landmass of the planet is. Okay. So there's a certain thought that that would be why they use that particular band. They travel along that line, but other researchers think it's because of the nuclear weapons that have exploded on the 33rd parallel and all sorts of other reasons. I mean, 33 is a, a charged number, right? But right. Yeah. there's a guy that I want to get in you in touch with who might explain this better than I can. Cool. Um, Hook him up. Yeah, no, I, I think, I think the whole alien topic is fascinating, but the more I learn about it, the more suspicious I am that it's actual extraterrestrials. I'm starting to think it's more of um, occultists who cooked up some kind of scheme to get everybody really comfortable with demons and some. some but so sort you of think that there's no entity. there's no planet somewhere in the universe that has uh, intelligent life. No, no. And that's the thing is you can, you can, you can think in those terms without necessarily not believing in space. You know, I, I don't have that point of view from a flat earth perspective. I do respect people from that perspective, but no, I honestly, we can get someone on the show to talk about that too. Cause I subscribe to the Tycho Brahe model and Copernicus actually murdered Tycho Brahe and deleted a lot of his work and really? i wonder if that's part of why we have copernicus's model today is because they were trying to cover up something that Tycho brahe found about the earth the sun and the moon and how they're not all revolving around the sun but the earth the sun and the moon according to Tycho brahe not me have this sort of uh kind of like a pump relationship where as the moon and the earth get enough momentum, the sun is also going through a sort of orbit and it's, it's complicated, but if people are interested, it came up last week when uh, David Matheson was on the show. Oh, okay. So you can yeah, go to Tycho's dot space and you can see the whole model and just wrap your head around it. Right, it could right. work if the earth was a plane too, for all the flat earth heads out there. Tycho's dot space. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you know someone who, who, uh, has a, a good bearing on this stuff, I'd be happy to talk with them about it. I just it, think it's, I just think it's really suspicious that the secret societies who kept all this occult information, you know, they all started, getting really mainstream and public right around the turn of the 19th century. And that's around the same time that we get all these sci-fi alien ideas. So that's, I don't, I don't come from this perspective of like, you know, maybe like more of the Bible thumpers who I respect them as well, but they're, they say, Oh, it's all demons. And it's easy to dismiss those people. Cause you know, most people are so, uh, they've been given such a double standard about Christianity that they're just like, oh, yeah, whatever, Christians, get over yourselves. But I think they have a point when they say that these aliens are, are demons. I really do. I don't I don't say that from a Christian perspective, but yeah. I am sympathetic towards it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What, 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 what would be the most out there conspiracy that you fully believe in? <laughs> well... That's the thing. I believe in revisionism. So I'm not really, I wouldn't identify as a conspiracy theorist. I, I like the term. I appreciate it, but it was created by the CIA. I, I, I respect Sam Tripoli for taking it back, so to speak, yep. and kind of making it cool again, because for a while he, he got a lot of shit for that. But I, I think of things in terms of re revisionism. So, you know, if we were to learn today that a, a diary came out that George Washington was indeed a Satan worshiping, you know what, then that would change the way we see him. Right. I mean, we, we wouldn't sure. ignore that. We would have to reconcile that. And I think that's really what most conspiracy theorists are. They're, they're revisionists. They just haven't been given that term from school because education, you know, it's been eroded. Yeah. And we don't understand that history is a sort of ongoing study. That sure you know, changes as new information reveals itself. So I guess to answer your, your better question, which is what's the wildest thing I believe in, I do think, and, and this is hot off the heels of listening to a guy 
named analog. So anytime I listen to somebody new who's got a ton of new information, I usually try those ideas on for a little bit. Maybe in a few months I'll feel differently. But what analog said, which I think is really, really compelling and has changed my ideas about a few things, he says that he thinks the pyramids were actually bunkers designed to keep people safe from the flood and that the, the ark that Noah describes is not a boat, but it's actually the pyramids. Hmm. And underneath the pyramids, there's three layers of cities. And underneath most of these ancient cities, there are three layers of cities. And some of the oldest, you know, world myths have stories of, you know, great beings coming from underground and saving people from a cataclysm. So and I'm starting to wonder, maybe we've been told all these lies about the pyramids because they use the pyramid to survive the resets. And when the earth goes through a major reset, whether it's from an asteroid or a change in the global climate or whatever, you know, cataclysm might befall us, the elites who are already building bunkers in our modern time you know, they built bunkers in the past and yeah. they just game the reset. You know, they, they prepare so that when most of the people die and forget about who the elites were, they can come along and say, oh, yeah, look, we're the light bringers. Worship us. We'll bring civilization back. And they can't, you know, they can't because they're not gods, but they, they try to play like they are. Right. Interesting. Yeah, I've never heard that one before. Uh, I mean, I've heard, obviously, the flood stuff, but. I don't know about it. Uh, have they ever found anything that um, confirms that other places, not Egypt, they, these like multi-layered bunkers? Well, in Mesopotamia too, yeah. Yeah, hmm. The um, I think it's Teotihuacan in Mexico has uh, multiple layers underneath it as well. And there are entire pyramids that are still underground. Like they, they've become overgrown. Some people think that the mounds in the, what is it, the Mississippi Valley area, the Ohio River Valley area yeah. in the Midwest. Yeah, the Ohio ones, yeah, yeah. Some people believe that, that some of those are pyramids underneath. They've just been covered over with earth. So Man, I wish they could, could just be go. many more pyramids than we realize. I wish they could just go excavate that shit. Well, just yeah, find, I mean, there's the out. whole conversation to be had about that we could get a uh, new york times author uh, douglas preston who i had on the show he actually worked with the smithsonian for a little while and told me some some secrets you yeah, know or at least what ask. he could of the secrets he knows but so, yeah they, they have all these weird laws protecting the anything in america and what's really crazy about it is and i, I might have told you this the first time we we're on the show but if they find anything that doesn't it like that doesn't belong to a living tribe or an extant tribe, then it's considered like they have to put it back in the ground. But here's the catch. They don't have to put it back in the ground where they dug it up. They just go and throw it in the ocean or go and throw it in a landfill. So what really? that means is that anytime yeah, anytime they find anything that doesn't corroborate with the official narrative of you know, what Native Americans were supposed to live here before Columbus. It's called the, the Native American Repatriation Act. And it, it's, I mean, on the face of it, it's, it's supposed to be a good thing. It's supposed to get all the museum, you know, all the grave robbed goods that are in museums back into the hands of the tribes. But right. what it's actually used for is to, to cover up the history of the giants, the history of maybe the white groups of people that were here before Columbus or even the African groups of people or the Chinese groups of people. I mean, sure. the list goes on and on. And anytime they find anything that doesn't belong to one of the quote unquote existing recognized tribes, they're obligated by law to throw it in a landfill. So, I mean, Weird. what does that tell I mean, you about the state of, of our history, right? It's yeah. actively being covered up. Huh? Interesting. Yeah. Well, if, if you can get that guy on, let's uh, let's try and hook it up. Oh yeah, uh, I got a long list of ideas, and anybody listening, you know, you, the email's right there. 
low yeah, value yeah, mail low questions, questions at gmail. Send us com. some suggestions. Yep. Yeah. And people, the, the best way to do that, or you can always hit me up on, you can always just DM me Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, whatever, but I, I'm pretty easily available. And you know, some of our guests have, uh, have come from just people recommending them. So I know. Uh, yeah. Um, all right, cool. Dude. I'm going to take another call. We'll talk to you soon. I know. Later, right. Mark, everybody. Mark the producer. Uh, what's going on here? Hello? Oh, there we go. And, uh, oh, hello. hello. Hey, Danny. What uh, is happening? Conspiracy extremist here. Yes, sir. Dude, mm-hmm. I got a, um, that, uh, a couple guys I've noticed on Twitter are kind of like eagerly awaiting uh, your uh, response. We knew it was inevitable to the, the for the rabbi, rabbi Shmuley thing. Process. You know what? It's funny because I was do making it today, and then I had saw the message. I was just trying to figure out what to do with it. Like, what was that, what I was going to make? But yeah, I saw people kept messaging me, being like, "When is the Rabbi Shmuley video coming?" <laughs> I I think I made a joke to somebody I, uh, the other day. I was like, "I think uh, Danny is single handedly single handed handedly uh, preventing like Twitter to be becoming Nazis." Like. Yeah, I don't know about that, but <laughs> <laughs> just because not my not my rabbi. Twitter. Oh, he's insane! Oh, really? <laughs> he, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah he's he's he's, but, uh, he's he's fucking nuts, Rabbi Shmuley. Oh my gosh! I couldn't, it's like, dude, do you, do you have like no self reflection? He just insane. loves attention, and I, I, that's the only thing I can kind of is just loves non-stop attention and he's just like there's no bad attention like if everybody's shitting on him he's like that's a win because at least they're they're talking about me like the stream everybody yeah uh what's up no i just wanted to yeah uh i love i gotta let you know man i love those sketches when you do them when you and ryan come out with those those are always bangers so oh thanks man really really appreciate it so yeah we're wondering were you uh were you doing uh uh, shows this weekend no i was at the libertarian presidential debates in colorado oh you went to that yeah i went to I'm that. sorry uh it's all good it was an interesting <laughs> scene it was it was interesting I, I i had a good time to be honest um to actually hear like libertarians are so reasonable until like a couple things and then you're like fuck nobody's gonna vote for you if you keep saying this like this one guy yep. who I think they're yep. saying is like almost the some people were saying he's like maybe the favorite, although I think it's this guy Chase Oliver, but this guy Michael Rechtenwald. And then his yeah, whole thing I don't know if you know him, but he, he Yeah. He's his whole, he's the uh, Dave Smith is is promoting him. Yeah. And his whole thing is he wants private borders. He's like there should so his immigration policy is that I guess whoever owns the land uh, I guess there should be just no such thing as borders anywhere, and just you should have your own private border on your property. I guess. Yeah. I didn't quite understand it, but you're like, man, people don't. The problem is, is most voters, you're like, they care about a single issue, for the yeah. most part. They're they're not like nuanced. So, and the single issues that the libertarians offer that are different than other parties are so crazy that. Nobody's going to vote for them. But, I mean, they got 5% in 2016, but I think a lot of people said that was because uh, they were just yeah. protesting. Hillary and Trump. Yeah, yeah the, right. um, the when it comes to borders, libertarians are just retard, retarded about it. Like, Josh Smith, did you hear him talk? He's, like, the only reasonable one. No, what did he say? He's. I mean, he basically has a reasonable take. We need a border. We need to sh- shut the border down. Um, yeah. Yeah, borders exist. <laughs> yeah, and that's, I, I guess, the problem is, is they get so into the theoretical stuff and, like, the principles of, you know, libertarianism, where they go, well, technically, based on blah, 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 they'll, like, say, well, we shouldn't have borders, and you're like, that's just, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to run for president, you should somewhat be like, we're trying to win here, I guess. Yeah, and that's what Josh says, uh, Josh Smith says, like, hey, I realize, yes, I'm, I'm a libertarian, but I'm going to be president for everyone, not just libertarians. So. Yeah, exa- exactly. And I mean, again, you're just you're going to lose every single person when you're like, yeah, just totally open borders or private, or if you go private borders and someone's like, 
not only do I not know what that means, but I don't even want you to explain it. Right. It's just like, no, I'm not voting for you. Exactly. Yes, yeah, it's completely so, unreasonable. But, but for the most part, awful. like listening to them all talk about the their positions and stuff, you're like, most is pretty reasonable. I'm like, I uh, like I could definitely see tons of people voting for the libertarians. The only problem is there's just there's the issue where you're until they're big enough, you just feel like you're throwing away your vote. Yeah, I still vote libertarian. I, I have the last two election ma- uh, major ones just because yeah. I'm I mean, rather... it is actually a good thing like to do it because hopefully just it slowly grows to a point where eventually like you could have a libertarian president. And also with uh, Mile and Argentina, maybe Argentina has a big turnaround and then, you know, maybe at that point people will vote, uh, will be more inclined because they'll look how good things are going around. Oh, Argentina. dude, have you not heard about the crap about Malay? No. Oh, my, all right. I'm about to piss everyone off that's listening. Okay. Okay. This dude is not what he says he is. This guy. <laughs> oh, a politician's lying, you say? Go yeah, on. no, but seriously, he, he's a psychopath. He, um, he doesn't have any kids. I'm pretty sure he's hooking up with his sister. Um, he's he's hooking up with his sister? His Yep. Yep. I know Absolutely. he's like a freak and he has like orgies and stuff, but he, he cloned his dog, um, uh, Conan into four clone clones before his dog died and then named them all Conan. I mean, as a dog owner, like, that's the thing. If you told that to my girl, she would totally be on board with that. Four clones. It's crazy. Yeah. Like if she, if she knew that she could have four of our dog when he dies eventually, I think she would take that. But yeah, that is wild. But that's not that. I mean, that seems like very impractical. I bet that's expensive to do, but uh Yeah, there's a whole me and uh me and my co host did a deep dive on him like a month or two ago and it's it's unsettling uh his backstory and like stuff he's done is crazy. So what what sorry, other stuff has he done? Was that what other stuff has he done? So he did, okay, um, before, while his dog was, like, dying, he hired, who was it, his, um, I think, like, his niece or something to go research, like, uh, this paranormal, paranormal uh, psycho communication thing. I forget the, the name of it, but basically, like, telepath. And he used her to communicate with his dog. Okay. Like, they did, like, a ritual and stuff. It's crazy. Uh, he sounds, yeah, he sounds pretty out there. But uh, has he done, is there any like actual kind of news back about the stuff he's been doing and whether that's in any way uh, working out, like at least for the country of Argentina, not just like his personal? Well, it dep- I mean, it depends on like what your, you know, your positions. I, he, the first thing he did was he went to Israel, which I yeah really don't like Israel. Um, oh, yeah. And, and so that, uh, you know, I'm very critical of that. Same with a lot of people, but um, he wants to bring, uh, he did a speech and quoted from the Talmud about how he wants to reconstruct the third temple and bring on, you know, all that prophecy stuff. Is he, He's not actually uh, Jewish though, is he? He just wants to convert? He is. He's related to, be- his. Uh, he's related to Benjamin Netanyahu. Oh, so he is actually by blood, because I, I yeah, saw that. Yeah, job. To go the other way? Like to make it bigger? To make it smaller, yeah. Not that. Oh. Not- not fulfilling any stereotypes, just yeah, yeah. Well, I was gonna thing. say to make it bigger to fulfill a stereotype, but um, <laughs> that's interesting because I, I remember that was his first thing he did was he basically flew to Brooklyn to go meet with like the rabbis in Brooklyn or something. That was like his first out of country mm-hmm. thing after getting elected. Um, yeah, and so Malay is short for like Malowski, I think, um, like his great grandfather was Malowski, and then Benjamin Netanyahu, I believe, great grandfather also has the same name so i forget the direct relation but they are related they are like some cousin down look crazy that's uh i've never heard of that before um yeah uh it's all i i can put more to it and send it to you but we yeah, i'll send you the video if you care to, to look through it but yeah we did it yeah we're gonna well, send me it. send me the video or put it in the chat or whatever we're watching the after show okay right on man yeah yeah okay later man all right so good later conspiracy extremist everybody uh, hello Oh, hey, what's up? It's Frank here. Frank, how's it going, man? Hey, all right. So um, this all this conspiracy stuff is kind of old hat to to me and my friend George over here. 
Okay. Um, we've been we've been watching or uh, listening to uh, Jeff Rance, Alex Jones, Jordan Maxwell, we, um, all the documentaries before the whole internet got shut down. We yeah. would go to these documentary sites and just see pretty much everything. We talk about nine eleven, lose change, zeitgeist, Iraq for sale, everything. Everyone anyway, says lose change is bullshit, though. That's all. Even though I, it, I had Jason on the show, but it's weird. I guess there's any community, there'll always be some division where people go, "No, mine's it, the real one." And it, it's just the amalgamation of like information that you weren't allowed to, you know. Right. Yeah. Visit. Yeah. Gotcha. So but you so can't I get all that stuff things. on BitChute or anything anymore. Uh, you know what? I, I kind of gave up on BitChute for a little bit now. I'm just a Rumble guy, a Rumble and YouTube guy, and I I want to just move over to Rumble. Yeah. I'm hoping that like. I hope that Rumble gives you and Ryan a deal so that you could just go over there. They like, I just like Rumble the platform is, so much better. Yeah, Rumble is. I mean, it's promising. They just, it's just annoying because they don't have. Well, I'm trying to see. I'm trying to find. Uh, do they have Europa: The Last Battle on here? I don't see it. Or maybe it's in French. Okay, they do have it, but they they don't like like even Rumble. It's a public company. Like Rumble's not going to be some crazy free speech place. Like. They're yeah. traded on the just, New York just, Stock I, Exchange. Like, yeah, I just I just assumed that they didn't give you a deal because Ryan wears crappy band shirts. He hasn't nah. worn a screeching weasel shirt once. So tell him to dip into his pocket a little bit and get a screeching know. weasel. I shirt. don't know who or what that is. Uh, <laughs> but 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 JFK. Let's go to JF. Let's go down the list. I made a list real quick. Yes. All right, yeah, JFK. Yeah, let's kill, hear okay, killed by the CIA. CIA and the Corsica mob, which is which is a French mob. I'm yeah. sure that they got help from the mafia too. You know that the CIA worked with um, uh, the Sicilian mafia during World War II, and they still mm -hmm. had a network over there. RFK was going to avenge his brother. Um, also, JFK and RFK were going to nationalize the Fed, and they were going to go back to the silver standard. JFK was killed by a security guard behind him. Uh, the bullets entered through the back of his head, and yep. there's this there's this very by the book Asian coroner that was like, yeah, absolutely not. I'm not gonna lie for you guys, and it was just so frustrating for the CIA and the FBI because they wanted uh, him to lie, and he just wouldn't lie. Most of the coroners would just lie, you know. They would just yeah, take especially a, you know, if you're like, hey, we're gonna make your life fucking miserable. Yeah, and, and RFK Jr. is so behind in the times. I guess he just found out that his father was killed, like, you know, maybe like 10 years ago or something like that. And you know what? I guess that happens sometimes, but it's just like, this guy's so behind on everything. Who is this he guy? Changed. Thomas Noguchi? Is that who it is? Yeah, Thomas Noguchi, exactly. Okay. Um, and, 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 and Cyril, Cyril Wecht, um, another famous coroner, he worked on both the cases. So he looked over the case file. Sierra Wecht is like the number one coroner and or was, I don't know if he's still alive, but number one coroner in like the, the entire country. Um, huh. Aliens, if you want, if you and your viewers, check out a story by H.P. Lovecraft called um, From Beyond. Okay. And that's where you're, that's where you're going to find the aliens. The aliens are not really like in our realm. They're in like the fourth dimension or something like that. So like, yeah, Watch Buckaroo Banzai, the movie. It's a goofy movie, but just watch it anyway. Read from beyond. Research rods. And you can see that, like, you know, they're here, but, like, they're just on another plane of existence. Do you say so rods? They're not, like, little... Yeah, rods. Like those things that, like, they... I, I've seen, like, videos where people, like, they see them and they're, like, in super Yeah, they, 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 they zoom in and out of, uh, you know, the, 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 the you know, our fabric of time it's like oh, okay. like there's nothing like there's nothing there's nothing out there over here i mean i don't maybe in like another galaxy but like here there's really nothing so i mean maybe we could find some bacteria or something but or maybe fossilized bacteria but there's nothing here um we talked about 9 11 building 7 uh oh, wmds a good documentary for that is iraq for sale Eyes wide shut. Everything is coming out now with all the sex parties. We learned about Lolita Express like 20 years ago. So the Lolita yeah, the, Express was the... Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, the crazy thing is Kubrick died right after... Didn't he die right like the day after or immediately after the screening of that movie? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was just like a... a, a was it, what's that coroner's name? I can't say his name. Tamaguchi or something like that. He was yeah. just like that guy. He just... He was so like hyper-focused on like, like just 
tell, I mean, not telling the truth, but like he he wanted to specifically make a movie about it, and he wouldn't take no for an answer, so they probably killed him. I mean, look, they just killed the Bowen guy. Like the the Bowen guy just died. He didn't just kill himself. Like he just that is know, a weird I mean, one because you're yeah. Everybody was like, yeah, he wasn't suicidal. What about the like, DC Madam? You remember the DC Madam? The DC yeah. Madam went on Alex Jones to so, and Alex Jones is like, are you gonna kill yourself? She's like, absolutely not. They find her in the shed hung. Why? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not. Come on, this is blatant. Blat- blat- I mean, oh, that's the yeah. thing. There's some people who can literally get away. You know, there there obviously is some cohort of people who can just get away with murder due to their yeah. involvement and in the government. And, and yeah, and, and look, the term it. conspiracy theorist to, to, to the, the other guy that called in. The term yeah. conspiracy theorist isn't like it was a coined term by the CIA, for people. Right? No, well, the yeah, JF- exactly, JFK Exa- stuff, exactly. Right? It's just it's 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 just a term that they use, just like anti-Semite. I mean, yeah. like like you know, have you ever have you you're Jewish, you're Jew, like have you ever like called anybody an anti-Semite? I would be if I, I was called Jewish, anyone. No, but I've been called one a lot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but like I mean, nobody nobody uses these words. Like I mean, no. you know, it, no, it, I, it, I mean, con- it's just a, I guess I can, uh conspiracy theorists. I use in the sense of like. There are legitimate conspiracies. There are unprovable conspiracies. And if you have a theory about an unprovable conspiracy, then... But I don't say it as in a negative light. I guess the problem is some people use it in a, in a negative light. As well, that's what that's a, what it's used for. It's used for a de- de- demonic label. It's yeah, it's used to, to demonize somebody. People. You label them, you put them in the corner. He's this. And you know what's funny is that like my friends are like literally most not even, not just my friends. Like most people I speak to, literally, I was at a sushi place and a guy's talking about chemtrails across from me. Yeah. I'm like I'm in the twilight zone here. This is like nuts. But yeah, the, the libertarian thing, and I'll let you go. Uh, is uh, it, a good a good um, book to read is The Man Who Awoke. And what it is is that it goes through the ages and, like, the future. And, like, you know, he, he puts himself in suspended animation. He just wakes up 500 years later. And, like, one time he, he wakes up in the age of license where, like, everyone is just floating around. Not floating around. They have, like, these, like, giant mechs with, like, a house on it, kind of like Mortal Engines. I don't know if you... Ever seen that movie? No, I have not. Okay, so so like it's everyone is like everyone's house is like on like these big like tripod legs, okay, and like pretty much still... everyone is their like own little nation, and it's like the most like biggest absurdity. Hmm. I was like seasteading. I remember we watched a a thing on the the after show with the people who like live out on the water and they're trying. To oh like... yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that that that's 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 kind of like the equivalent right now. But it's just so funny because libertarians, like you said, like libertarians are cool until they start saying like, oh, yeah, you know, drugs and prostitution and pimps and all this stuff, you know, just make it all legal and everything will be great. I mean, like, look at California. I mean, look at Colorado. Look at look at Seattle, Washington. Like this is this is that this is like, you know, this is not even I mean, Colorado actually seemed all right, to be honest. Anecdotally, Denver, Colorado. I, uh, I didn't go into Denver, actually. Yeah, go to Denver and then come back and, and talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I'll let All you right. go. I'll talk All to you later, man. Later, man. Thank you, everybody. Uh, All right, we've got another call here. Hello, you're on Low Valley Mail. Who am I speaking with? Howdy, Danny. This is Chris calling. Chris, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm hanging in there. And you? Very good, very good. Fantastic. Yeah, you know, one story that continues to keep my interest is just how remarkably effective this president Nayib Bukele guy and yeah. um, uh, El Salvador has been doing. I mean, he's winning and, big time, especially with the price of Bitcoin. Everybody was like, you ruined the country buying all that Bitcoin. Now he's like up a bunch of money on the Bitcoin. And, yeah, no uh, kidding. And all the, whatchamacallit, all the, all the uh, MS-13 and he's cleaning up the, clean up the streets and whatnot. That's just it. I mean, that gang crackdown just seems to be like almost impossibly effective. And who knows just how reliable the um, crime statistics are, not just in El Salvador, but South just America as yeah. a whole, I guess. But, but I, yeah, mean, I, if, um, I, I mean, the thing is, they he's say just... like he eliminated murder, basically. Yeah, that I'd like to 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 know about. But the problem with like, you know, if people see, oh, th- that's a great system, you should do that in another country. But the problem is what's really going on is, yes, they're 
locking up all these people who are probably, you know, bad people, but then they're, they're probably casting like a wide net and they're just getting people who probably shouldn't be in jail. And then eventually you wind up in a solution or not a, a situation where it's maybe more akin to the United States where you're like, fuck all these people are in jail who probably like shouldn't be in jail. And we put them in jail for the greater safety of the country, but then they go, okay, well maybe we should trade some safety so that all these people who shouldn't be in jail. And then it's, it's just this like, back and forth, you know, like, yeah, it's, you essentially, everything's going to be a trade-off. So you can say, Hey, we're going to go easier on crime. And then you go, okay, well then there's going to be more crime, but then they're like, well, but there's less people in jail who shouldn't be, and you know, that's true as well. No so, doubt. I mean, there's gotta be some false positives of, you know, 16 year olds who thought they were hardcore getting MS 13 for baby cats and now yeah. looking at life sentences. Yeah. And they're just like locked up in a fucking cage. Um, yeah, the, the, for them to say that they have zero, I mean, El Salvador, it says right here on January 30th, El Salvador says murders fell 70% in 2023 as it cracked down on Yeah, games. I mean, they I, say I it went that. from being like the most dangerous country in the world as far as their murder rate to like one of the safest in South America as a whole now. Which um, I could see that. It said they went uh, 154 murders down from 500 the year before. I, I don't know what their population if is. If you just look at those photos in prison, I mean, it's I, oh, I saw them. they're going to have results. Yeah, I saw them. What's their population? Six million. Five hundred murders for six million doesn't even seem... Six million, huh? <laughs> that great, yes. Six million. Yeah. Um, um, but and- 500 murders for six million, I don't know if that's how high that is relative to... I guess that's probably fairly high. Yeah, and, and contrasting with that, I mean, I think I saw a stat somewhere recently that just decade after decade, the murder clearance rate here in the States just continues to fall. Uh, to where now it's something like fifty three percent nationally or something. Which by uh, clearance you mean solved or like? It, it, yeah, that from my understanding. Um, well, I heard that and, uh, at the FBI because this kind of goes contrary to what everyone's saying about crime. And again, you know, the thing is, obviously, people when they want to prove some sort of point, they will happily uh, quote the FBI crime statistics. Uh, especially when it comes down to like race and stuff. But apparently the FBI is about to come out with their crime stats saying like crime in the United States is like the lowest it's been like in a very long time. But again, I don't know how they classify it. And is that all crime or is that violent crime? But uh, there is this spate right where my studio is. There's a spate of chicks getting punched in the face by this guy. I apparently. saw that on TikTok. Yeah, and then all these girls came out and they're like, "Yeah, this guy was rocking a dog and he punched me in the face." But you got to keep yeah. your head on a swivel in this city, you know. No doubt. Yeah, I guess it's just like contrasting what we're seeing in El Salvador with their crackdown, and here it's like, you know, I, I do sort of subscribe to that. Um, Dave Smith idea of like just how scary the potential for um, like the security state turning itself inwards and like uh, like certainly prioritizing like the rights of privacy and that's something I've always subscribed to but when you see like I, I mean certainly from 2020 onward but the summer of BLM for sure like just how much people were able to get away with it does sort of make you scratch your head and think like with all of the technology we have now from like advanced surveillance systems and um, not just DNA stuff, but like uh, from the first 48 kind of thing, like yeah. how do we allow ourselves to have a 54% clearance rate? That just seems so at odds with where technology is at that. Well, we're not, that- I'm sure it's, that's not what it is in China though. Like, you know, just because they have the technology, I mean, a lot of people still push back on it. Like, being, it's like being if we had the desire, everywhere. though, you know, not quite like Bukele, who, you know, obviously there's, uh, like you said, that balance with human rights and being effective. But it just feels as though if we had the desire to actually push down and crack down on violent crime in particular, just a fraction of the way he does down there in El Salvador, that uh, we don't have to be content with the amount of violent crime and murders that no, we see in a hundred percent. Yeah, no question. They, they could do that, but there's going to be all sorts of, I mean, Giuliani famously kind of did it when he was the mayor 
right? It was like New York was this, uh, everybody was like, it was so dangerous. It was in a hellhole. And then he went and he just like cracked down super hard. And they were, you know, like essentially violating people's rights, though. You know, they were stopping you in the street for no reason and searching you and all this shit. And yeah, it, doing stuff like that will remove criminals. But then it also leads you to a place where, like, you know, America has the highest rate of incarcerated people, like, in the world. Surely, yeah. So, and so I suppose you, you have to decide what trades you want to make there. Like, the allocation of resources where, I mean, clearly uh, a, a hooker with no friends or family and who's barely on papers is obviously going to fall through the cracks and the murder isn't going to be as um, pursued as, you know, a high-profile um, business owner in a city or what have you. And so Absolutely, those are going to yeah. go unsolved I mean, much more. And we New can't York dedicate and, the same resources to. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. Like but. New York and Toronto both had, they used to have like uh New York had like stop and frisk and Toronto had like carding and stuff where they essentially just, you know, just like if you lived in a certain area or like you just looked like a criminal essentially, which ends up just tons of racial profiling, then they, you know, they end up like, just again, you have to decide, do I want to live in a country where they do that stuff? And some people will be like, yes, because it's safer. But then you're like, well, but you're giving up a lot of rights by allowing that to happen. Uh, yeah. So, I, I mean, yeah, but yes, they could for sure. Like China has less crime than America, I, I would imagine. But they yeah. trade off a lot for that. And those rights you don't get back. Like, you know, if you give those up, like you don't get them back. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it's almost like a guilty feeling where sometimes, like, I'll see just how, like, uh, degenerate and just how out of hand things can get in certain cities. And I almost find myself, like, actively fleeting with some of those pro-privacy positions I previously held strong to, thinking to myself, like, you know, and what really threw me for a loop. And I, I was trying to call in and ask you about this on that episode a month and a half or so ago when you had that FBI agent on yeah. was in the summer of 2020 was how for, for months we just kept seeing footage of um, one that particularly it caught my interest was we'd see all these Apple stores robbed. Yeah. Um, and, and we know that all of these uh, demo devices can e easily be tracked. Um, all and of yet, them can. I'm pretty sure even I always wondered about that. Like when, you know, uh, someone robs like a, tra a trailer of Apple devices, and you're like, surely those can yeah. be all traced. And, and we don't know the follow up on each of them exactly. But if you were following Andy Noe's Twitter feed that summer, you knew that like so many of these protesters, even those who were violent, uh, basically showed up for court and had their charges dropped like in mass. Yeah. Um, and it was strange to me, like just how much of that stuff was able to let go on and how very little of it seemed to be pursued like uh, by prosecutors, especially in the hubs like San Francisco, Seattle, Portland, et cetera. But then what was particularly strange was what we learned at the trial for Kyle Rittenhouse, which was that the FBI was flying drones um, above like these major cities as these protests and Let's be honest, the riots were going on. Yeah. And we only ever heard of this um, when they brought this footage to Kyle Rittenhouse's trial to prosecute him for uh, obviously taking those uh, Tommy pedos down. Yeah. Um, it was just very strange to me that we'd never heard of that footage to be used for the prosecution of these people rioting or like, I mean, they used to the chaos and damage, except for when it came time to prosecute Kyle of all people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they used to, like, have helicopters and stuff doing that, but I guess the difference is you is very clear that there was a helicopter above you surveilling you. Like, you know, the police are in a helicopter, like, it's loud and it's, it, you know, you can see them, whereas I guess these drones just have no idea. But yeah, that is a good point. Yeah. I, uh... I, I just thought it was strange that the, the only time we learned of, like, uh, the existence of those drones, like, uh, what was to be you prosecute Kyle of all people. Yeah. And I mean, look, th th there's a lot of people who would happily be like, yeah, more drones. If it means safer, you know, it, it would be safer for me to, uh, to live or whatever. And I mean, again, that's a trade off you make. Like I keep seeing in Toronto, Toronto has like an insane, um, car theft problem right now 
because yeah. I guess they just like are not they barely like prosecute it and there's all these like car theft rings and they're like breaking into people's homes at like four in the morning to steal their cars and people are now setting up um bollards like those metal like poles yeah. or whatever but they retract into the ground like so basically like, you got it's like a whole thing to set them up but now like you just press a button and they go up and then your car is essentially like fenced in and like cannot be stolen but you're like it's crazy because you're not allowed like if you caught someone trying to steal your car at four in the morning like you can call the police the police are not going to get there in time and if you try and do anything yourself then they'll arrest you i've seen a few cases even where they're taking a page out of car thieves in south africa's book and, and even like buying like uh the signal jammers off Alibaba, basically. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If it, oh, yeah, all that stuff. The... All that stuff, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, even, like, the mayor of Chicago bringing lawsuits against Kia and Hyundai for failing to uh, uh, put, like, uh, sure enough anti-theft devices on their cars. So going after, like, Kia and Hyundai um, for failing to basically prepare enough for what, some yeah, place like that. the South but again, Chicago I don't like, like, obviously, if you, if, if people knew, like, I guarantee shit like that does not happen in Texas and Florida where the, you think that, like, the guy inside the house has a gun, people aren't going to steal those cars. Like, the, no way that's happening. They go where places where they know, like, that's just not going to be something that happens. Yeah. Understandably, like, that's smart of them. Why would they go somewhere where they might get shot? But, uh, there is some totally. level where people are like are not even allowed to protect their property or themselves, which is I don't know, pretty crazy. Yeah. So about eight months ago, you had a uh, this killer author on Nick Bryant. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it was one of your better episodes. I thought I really enjoyed it. And uh, Nick Bryant, I feel like is just hella underappreciated. Um, it, he was also the guy who initially leaked Epstein's black book. Um, and he was the author of this awesome book that um, I thought was incredible. It's called The, the Franklin, Franklin Scandal. Scandal. Yeah, The Franklin Scandal um, is insane. It's one of the and, and craziest things I've ever heard of. He was promoting, like, the, I think it's called, like, the Epstein Justice Fund. Yeah. I um, mean, so most of your conversation revolved around, like, um, obviously the Epstein case. But have you dug into the Franklin Scandal or have you read that? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I didn't read the book, but I watched a ton of stuff on it. I read a ton of stuff on it. And, like, yeah, it's crazy. It's basically like a government funded sex ring. I mean, essentially what people think it is, but it were, it is one of the crazier things. All these people like getting killed. The, guy, the private investigators, like, flight explodes in midair with his son on board. With his son yeah. on board. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, the Franklin Scandal. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I mean, that was Gary Caradori, whose plane blew yeah. up. He, he was, like, the, the lead investigator. And, you know, I think one of the last messages he sent um, to someone he was working with was, I finally got him by the short hairs. Right. You know, he was picking up a briefcase full of evidence, and uh, that was, like, the only thing missing from the plane. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was just interested about that because that's one book that, like, you just can't deny it anybody who has reservations or thinks some of this stuff is just too crazy to be believed um that book will put any of those questions to rest is it's just so thoroughly researched over the yeah, course of like it, a decade plus yeah it's it, it's uh highly recommend or, or go give that episode a watch if you haven't um all right i gotta let you go man oh sorry okay take care Danny. yeah take care all right slav dude what's going on what's happening what's man so everyone's talking about this whole thing with the bridge. Yeah, what do you think about the bridge? The Baltic. So I'm going to tell you what's not going to be conspiracy. Mark okay. my words. Write yes. this down. I'm going to, what I'm going to best tell you is going to be happening. Okay. They're going to they're going to put up all those banners, being like, "This is the reconstruction process." They ain't going to be naming it after Francis Scott Key. They go probably. I saw out, so, I like, saw something a post uh, similar to that. Someone said, "Who is that? Who's that I, I guy?" I don't know. I, I'm not. I didn't. I didn't see this anywhere. I just know how things are going to play. Oh, out. he's like They're he looks. Gonna... Francis Scott Key. If you Google him, he was born in 1779. So you have to almost assume that he's got some for today's standards. Uh, who who even cares? I don't I care. Don't. I mean, yeah, I mean, what is it? I mean, dude, are there better, I mean, 
there's that song i'm a real american that Hulk yeah. hogan used to play uh-huh. that, that's a way better anthem for america than you know star spangled banner but either way what's gonna happen is they'll probably go dig through like the murder records of finding like the first black trainee killed in Baltimore. And Probably they're going to do the what first. they did with in in Toronto. So Toronto has this thing called it used to be called Young and Dundas Square, where it's just like our Times Square essentially, but like a smaller version of it. And then they just decided after George Floyd, but they did it probably like six months ago. They're like renaming it. And they renamed it to this thing called San Kofa Square, I believe, which is like a Ghani, like it's like a Ghanaian. I don't know uh, how you say it, but like from Ghana. Uh, But there's like Toronto doesn't even have like a big population of people from Ghana. Like they just it's like some random thing. Anyways, it's. uh, No, I mean, so in in Canada, would you get in trouble if you still referred it to, like they start renaming things? And then you just start, you know. Being like, oh, I call oh, every I call that. everything the old names. I don't I don't update my names for anything. But they're talking about renaming yeah, like maybe. one of the biggest streets in Toronto, like like because uh, it was named after this guy Henry Dundas or whatever. That was the whole issue. But this guy um, Francis Scott Key, if you go to his Wikipedia, says uh, he has a whole section about slavery and says Key purchased his first slave in 1800 or 1801 and owned six slaves in 1820. He freed seven in the 1830s. And owned eight when he died. Seems like a fucking elementary school like math problem. Um, well, I mean, I mean, the, the owning a slave is it's um, it, it was no cheap deal. Like it, 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 like you know, everyone acting like everyone had a slave back then. No, like no, they, like the it was the equivalent of like twenty, thirty thousand dollars. It's like basically that they yeah, it's a, lug- a super luxury, a brand new sedan. I think yeah, they should bring no, everyone I- acting like. I think they should bring slavery back, but like not just black slavery, just like just how it used to be where anybody could well, be a slave. It, it, uh, what is it? Uh, someone I've heard someone say, if you can't own a slave, are you truly free? Like, um, could, I mean, it's more, I think it's more the stakes of just that, you know, whatever fraction of a percentage is that <laughs> if things go bad enough for you that you could become a slave, that seems like more interesting to me. I don't really want to own a slave. But just the idea that you go, man, if you fuck up enough, enough different ways and just shit goes so sideways for you that you could become a slave. But I, I mean, I wish there was like, I mean, you could probably still do like they still have slavery, like what in the Middle East? I'm talking about Africa everywhere. And all I'm that. So, yeah, yeah. They yeah, have, but, um, but the mentality, but the, the mentality of being a white person and then holding power like. Cause like, look what happened in Haiti. Oh, they all revolted, right? So imagine like a slave, a slave owner back in the day, and he's got a whole. He, he's managed to get a plantation. He's bouncing the books. He's got anywhere from a dozen. To His 20, labor expenses are slaves. quite low. Well, I mean, you have to house them. You got to feed them. <laughs> you got to make sure they don't learn how to read. Like, you got to make sure your property doesn't run off. You got to make sure you know. You probably yeah. ain't staring at your wife or your daughter for too long. Hey, man. You it's, know, it's, most slaves, more problems, as they say. It's, you know, it, it, you got to sort of like give it, like it, it should be studied in like modern, you know, business management. I don't know yeah. if they teach that in business school. Slave, like, the economics of slavery, I do not believe they, I don't remember that as a section when I went to school, but. Right, yeah. And yeah. then, what is it? You mentioned that this thing in Toronto with all the stolen cars. Did you see there was this video this guy had? Uh, he lives in like a neighborhood outside of Toronto, but he had his, I think he either had an Escalade the first time or like a GMC Yukon Denali, and yeah. it was stolen. And then he got another one. That was still stolen, but he had put an air tag in it. Yeah, I saw that, and he found and he had, it in Africa, right? Oh, he tracked it. All the uh, he tracked it landing in uh, Hamburg, and then yeah, he was like telling uh, Hamburg, not Hamburg. Uh, Maybe there's a different guy because the there was one. Was- there was one guy who had an air tag. He put an air tag in his car. It got stolen, and then 
the air ta- tag went dark because an air tag, the only way it can be activated is it has to come in contact with an iPhone being with an nearby, iPhone yeah. that's on Bluetooth that has Bluetooth on. So I guess at some point it passed by one and then it was like in, they found it in like, I think it was like somewhere in Africa or something, but. Well, so what is it? A decade ago, Vice put out a whole documentary how most of the cars being sto- that were being stolen in uh, New Jersey, especially like Trenton and stuff, and Newark. Yeah. All of them ended up in Legos, and there was even uh, last year somebody posted a photo of like dumps, like uh, those garbage bins from like all these different townships in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and they're like in Legos in Nigeria. They're like because they're just like the garbage bins were just stuffed full of other stolen merchandise. I mean, that's the thing is uh, you'd think technology would have some sort of way of you know minimizing car theft but then at the end of the day you can just strip cars of for their parts and parts are still always going to be valuable um yeah, yeah. Well, uh, anyway, I, I don't know i mean it, it sucks because that's the thing that is the type of thing where like if you own a car like you are paying for that shit through your insurance like yeah. you, pay, you pay for well, I mean, all these car most, thefts but most people lease now because they don't want you owning it well it doesn't matter the, you still have insurance yeah. and your insurance is socializing all of these like losses so it's like everybody who has insurance yeah, pays for all of these stolen cars. Yeah. And then California like raised uh, like all the auto companies raised their rates. All the auto insurance companies raised their rates for California by like three hundred percent. Well, that's the which, thing is, is, is if that if that's what it costs to insure that group, like you know the insurance company, the alternative that, is that, they. That was that was the most annoying thing during those uh, during those riots because George Floyd wanted to overdose. Was everyone's like, oh, why do you care about the store burning? Like, they're all insured. It's like, well, you've never insured anything in your life. You have no idea how insurance works. Yeah, but it's just like it's just enough cool, time cool. happens. They're gonna raise the rates, and eventually they'll refuse service. And now yeah, you can't exactly. legally operate because you don't have insurance. And then lastly, with that whole thing about um, chicks being knocked out in New York, um, are you, are you gonna get your chick a gun? Dude, I live in I New York. Think she's going- Man, they were auctioning off actually at the Libertarian event. They did a silent auction and they were auctioning off a fucking AR-15 with a with a suppressor. This thing was badass. And uh and well, people, I mean, kept, the people people kept joking. The They're like, Are you gonna bid on it? And I'm like, I can't own a gun. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And you know, you say that, oh, you're in New York. Well, that that is a Excuse my language. That is a hogwash, horse shit excuse. Yeah. You know who owns guns in New York? All the gangs and kids in the South Bronx. They got yeah. No but the problem, problem is, it's the guns. It, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. The problem is, I I'm not even gonna lie to you. Right now, I think about owning a gun almost every single day when I'm in New York because you see something or you like you read something or I'll see something like in person and I'll be like, man. But the problem is, is that if I used it, then I go to jail. And you're like, what is the point of that? You know, like at the end well, of the day, am dead. I really am I really winning if some guy is like hassling me on the subway and maybe he wants to take my phone or something and he's got a knife and I shoot him dead and then I go to jail for fucking 10 years? It's like, did I win that interaction? Well, that's kind of a weak. That's, I mean, hey, I mean, anger, anger well, you have to be phone. pragmatic to a degree like do I, would I rather have 10 years of my life and like, you know, I kept my honor and, you know, I was in the right in that scenario, but you know, I'm still in a fucking lock in a cage and lost 10 years of my life over a phone. If you go to, if you you end up going to prison, I mean, Hey, you got Derek will probably help you out. You know, he still has, he'll he'll top up the commissary. He'll tell some of his pals to give me a, you, somebody will smuggle in a cell phone. You could keep recording. You know, yeah, I'll do some shows. TikToks and stuff. Here's the thing. Look, I, I, and I'm telling you, I'm not even exaggerating. I think about it so much that I'm like, man, it would be just if everybody just had guns here, how much more civil New York City would probably be. I don't know. I, I wonder that. Like, I wonder if New York City would be if everybody had guns, it would just be like insane or if it'd be like Texas where, you know, other than the well, fact that you just you have the odd fucking mass shooting here and there. Which there hasn't been one in a while, to be honest. It seems like that's a thing. For 350 million people, you got one or two mass shootings a year. It doesn't seem that crazy. It's not great. 
No, you, what are you talking about? You guys have mass shootings all the time in the Bronx and then in Brooklyn. Well, I'm talking about the ones where, like, the people don't have it coming. Like, look, nobody really gives a shit if, like, you know, that's why everybody, when the, the gun stuff, and they'll be like, oh, there was 12 mass shootings in Chicago this year, like, or this weekend. You're like, nobody cares. Those people, that's their beef internally. It's it's when the public's getting dragged into this shit that, you know, and, like, innocent bystanders and stuff, then people start caring. If you guys want to go kill yourselves in gangs and nobody's being affected, then nobody, I don't know, regular people don't care. Yeah, but, I mean, and then you mentioned air. I mean, down here in Texas, it's not like people are walking around with ARs. I mean, everyone's got, like, a, most people are concealed. With like yeah. A, and they just have a concealed handgun, so you can't even tell. And, and that's that's all you, that's the thing. That's the, almost the best, concealed is, in a crazy way, that is actually the best system because it requires actually less guns for people to have because now you don't even know who has guns, but you'd be stupid to assume that nobody has guns and you never know. So just from like, a, you know, almost like a str- strategically, you'd be like, look, this person might have a gun. Everybody might have a gun. Who knows? And then so you just are a little more civil and you don't do shit like stealing people's cars or doing crazy shit because... Who knows? Uh, who has a gun? Right. Well, I mean, the, y'all don't even have capital law up there in New York City. I mean, they're not anything. They have, have, they have duty to retreat here. You have to run away. Like if someone fucking came up with me in a knife and I Jackie Chan their ass and took the knife from them and stabbed them, I would go to jail. I mean, look at I the mean, fucking Daniel. Look at the Daniel Penny shit. That's, well, that's the thing is, you, you, these people get caught. You, you know, Danny, you need to walk around with like black nitro gloves and a shiesty mask, paint your face black. You know? Yeah, I don't or know if get... painting my face black will be great for my career, but. Or just, uh, what do you th- Oh, it was great for many. I mean, uh, how stern. <laughs> that's true. I don't know if it helps him per se, but uh, yeah, those are different times. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I do think about the gun thing a lot. Uh, like I always wonder, like if you gave everybody in New York a gun, would there be more shootings or less? I think it would happen. Like they would all weed each other out. Like all the people who lack any sort of impulse control, or people who just have just uh, just absolute vitriol beef with another person. Yeah, maybe like the first few months they'd just be. But the thing is, people do life. have guns. They just have them illegally. But it's not like people don't have guns. I mean, literally, a cop was shot in the Bronx uh, uh, yesterday and killed. A police officer was shot and killed yesterday in the Bronx by some dude who has like a you know a fucking insane rap sheet. Twenty one conviction. Yeah, insane rap sheet. Got pulled over. Yeah. So it's like the bad. And I know everybody. You know, it's ad nauseum. The the but like yeah, the bad people do have guns, and they're not afraid to use them. Uh, so I I don't know. I I wonder. I think about it a lot. I do honestly think about it about having a gun a lot. I think about uh what would happen if everybody here had guns. I don't know. Uh, I don't really know. Mm, oh, well. yeah, what do you think about the Moscow thing? Before I let you go. Um. Okay. So obviously one. Um. Uh, my favorite. Who's the uh, current uh U.S. Secretary uh, Secretary of State Kirby? Blinken. John Kirby. Is that his name? Blinken. Oh yeah, Blinken. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was asked. Uh, he was. Uh, he was asked like in a White House press press secretary thing, um, press meeting, whatever they're at. Um, what is it? Uh, what do you guys have anything to say about the Moscow test? He's like, oh, we had no idea. And then one of the reporters said, y'all literally forty eight hours earlier put out a bulletin to for everyone to two, avoid we, two weeks gathering. ago they, march 7th they put yeah, out yeah. a bulletin saying, and then yeah. and then all he could respond was with what happened in moscow was not what we were referring to so there's one there's that and, interesting Secondly, i mean it, it, i honestly think that that whole thing if that's tr- true is actually kind of damaging to putin because then there's like some element where you're like look the american government cared more about your people than you did they're like we told you that there was going to be this thing and Putin was the reason why it happened. I mean, again, they don't have elections or anything, so and they just had a fake one, so who even cares? But like, in, if I was a, a Russian who's super dis, like, it's a pretty good little chip on uh, for the U.S. because they're like, look, we warned you, we tried to prevent this from happening, and your leadership allowed this to happen. 
Hey, and since we were just talking about the Second Amendment, dude, I saw the videos from inside. I was like, all I could think is like, there's like people crouched over there, crouched over there, crouched over there, who were like hidden away from the uh, gunmen. And I'm like, yeah. only if these motherfuckers had a gun on them. I like, mean, that's that's every one of those things. It's always just like, man, any one of those things. Because you know? remember that uh, the shooting uh, they had in Nairobi in that mall, like in 2018, 2019. I don't know. It was know. like that mass. Yeah, there was like a mass. It was like Al Shabaab or whoever. They they took over a mall and they had shooting. And who stopped them? Like a former SAS guy who literally ran, like raced to his house, grabbed his gear and guns and kid, just went in there. Just oh, he went. And he came back. Hmm? He he went and came back. Like he basically uh, went and got his uh, shit and came. Uh, anyways, but a guy, a good, essentially, this is the good guy with a gun stops the bad guys with a gun. Yeah, but but and then everyone says, "Oh, Putin made a false flag," which is not out of the realm of possibility because the second Chechen war in 1996 that was started because in 1995 there were a bunch of bombings in Moscow of apartments. Yeah, and I think one of the apartments on the other side of this canal that I lived in got bombed up because I just remember. One morning I woke up, it was like a giant, huge black hole on the side. Oh, wow. And uh, I was just being told, oh, that. But what they found was at most of these uh, sites where they had uh, departments exploded, they found fragments of Russian munitions. But there was like of these new, like just newly made ones. And the only way anyone could get their hands on it is As if, it was the government. if it was bought off or given not, not by the government because. How they run things is commanders are in charge of all of their units, all of their soldiers, and all of their equipment. So they just give them carte blanche, and they're like, okay, you do whatever. Like, here's all this money. Here's all this equipment. You figure out what you need because you know your men best. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. the. I mean, the false flag thing goes out the window, though, the moment America, like, that, they had that fucking... Uh... <laughs> that that warning yeah. two weeks ago. So you're like, it kind of hurts the false flag narrative because America warned about such a thing. And I mean, it seemed like it was ISIS or ISIS K. I, 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 I did. I don't. I see a very big lack of prayers for Moscow on social media. Well, because they're the it's enemy. Just... Nobody cares. Yeah. No. I mean, it's just starting ironic, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw a I lot of not... like politicians, a lot of world leaders, all kind of like, you know condemned and said, said the right things but yeah normal people don't care about i mean moscow has been conditioned like russia is just the enemy natural enemy of the united states people are not going to care about that um all right i gotta let you go man all right go get a gun all right let's love everybody let's take another call hello hello yo what's up you're on low value mail who am i speaking with hey i'm jason how's it going good how's it going Okay, so my favorite conspiracy theory is that uh, the uh, population is going to shrink. So, yeah. okay, so if the population, so because women don't want to get with men, right? Yeah. But well, men don't want to. Men, men also don't are like kind of putting off, kind of having families and stuff as well. I think it's right, too, but too that, prong. that's but that's not the the issue um if it gets bad enough do you really think the women will have any kind of position to fight off the men that will just you know force themselves into making babies yeah but that's not really like a long-term strategy like you're not gonna you know course correct the um, the ship by being like hey every man just go start like on mass like raping women like i don't that's not the uh, like. I mean, my, I, my actual conspiracy a, a theory of mine with all the border shit is. And I mean, I've said this before, but they're the border's wide open because they need a certain amount of people to hit population targets, and they're not doing it otherwise. And you know, like those people are all, regardless of what they're doing in America, they're all consumers, and they all have to buy shit, they all have to eat, they all have to buy toilet paper, they all have to, like, contribute, buying gas or whatever the fuck, transportation. And they just have targets, population growth targets, and, like, that's the easiest way to hit them it is literally just, like, wide open the fucking border. And just, like, as long as you right. fly to Mexico, you can just walk in. 
but okay, so the the it it goes it it continues going the way it is, right? And then eventually, you know, they they pull men out of all these positions that they're you know like infrastructure wise, and then mm-hmm. everything collapse collapses on itself, right? Yeah. Do you think that they're gonna care? Uh, you know. All, all they really need to do is, you know, be a group of guys just be like, hey, um, there's there's a bunch of women over in the next town over. Yeah, you know? but we live in a society with the rule of law and whatnot. I, like, you're right. That that scenario that, is is like an end of times thing. Like for us to just be like s- snap our fingers and saying that that's what we're doing now. Like, it's just not going to happen. Right, but with all this warning of this, uh, what is it, the solar eclipse bullshit that, yeah. you know, they're saying, oh, oh, pack up food and pack up arms and, you know, make sure you have gas enough for a month or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I say in two two weeks, the system would break down and people would just be like, you know what, this is how it's going to go. Look, yeah, yeah. You, the what you're explaining is like some sort of post-apocalyptic where there's no. But again, I don't. If if in two right, weeks, if there's no the none of that shit, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying even in two weeks, if if all that happened, like people aren't going to be thinking about procreating. You're like thinking about survival at that point. Certainly, there will be guys who will, you know, be doing shit like that. But then there'll also be militias forming who will be policing that stuff. And I don't think it will be rampant like that. I think people will be worried about like food. And you know, basic needs. Uh, th- that that I don't know. that is like five. That's like if in five years they still haven't got power back, or like three years or something, then I could see it devolving into something like that. But I don't think two weeks. I mean, I, I don't know. They uh, they did uh, the almost the same stuff happened over in Africa, and exactly that happened where there was uh, when was people that? were stealing stealing women. Um. What's it called? The uh, what was that? That big that big thing where the uh, where, where they were taken over and they installed a government. Oh, what's it called? It, a coup? it was a, it was a real big thing. Um, Boko Haram. Can't remember. No, it was. I don't know. Um, I can't. Re- I can't remember yeah. what it was called. But, yeah, but there not, was not, a there was Rwanda. Someone there was says? an event. It, it's it's where they. Uh, Anyways, they put, but you're you're saying it did happen in Africa. I just don't see that kind of thing happening here. But then also, I don't. I can't. It's hard to grasp. Like not having electricity, like w- how things would devolve, how quickly they would devolve. And right. I'm sure, right. I'm sure no. rural, I'm sure some rural areas would be like, nothing would change for them or minimal right. things would change for them. Well, I'm, and, I'm and talking so, mostly about city, like city and... life. Like, yeah. Like New York city. I don't, yeah. I, I, still I mean, don't see it being... look, look at it in the state right now. They're already all, all the crime and all that stuff. And now you take away power, water. I mean, if you uh, take away water, then yeah, that's who knows what'll happen because I mean, people will be literally dying at that point. But uh, yeah, hard to say, hard to say. Um, all right, I gotta let you go. Thanks, caller. Uh, yeah, interesting. Thanks very much, everybody, for joining me. Um, we got some super chats from Vincent. Evidence that the Earth is a sphere. Just saying. And he says, Danny, why use zero percent on flat Earth? I'm dying to see evidence that it's a sphere, bubbles in space. Um, honestly, I just think that uh, one like flying. I mean, all like the aviation industry is premised on the fact that. Uh, the earth is not flat. I mean, I've been to Australia. I know that the flat earthers have some sort of explanation for how Australia going to Australia is possible, but I believe it involves uh, a lot of lying 
on the part of like you know like you have that little map when you're on a flight and it shows you like like that also has to be all fudged and then you know like Elon Musk is constantly sending rockets and uh uh satellites into space and stuff which I feel that wouldn't work unless and I know that there's always like a an like a answer I guess the flat earthers will say well but this and then um and I mean, the the best. If you ever go watch this guy, uh, I think his name's Doctor Mike or Doctor Dave, and Fl- or no, Flat Earth Dave. And if you go search Flat Earth Dave, who was on the show, uh, with Do- I think his name is Professor Dave and uh, a Flat Earth Dave. It's, the video is Professor Dave humiliates Flat Earther David Weiss has 5 million views and it's called professor Dave explains. And like, he has some pretty good, um, like in terms of the earth's rotation and like why there's like, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing it justice, but professor Dave puts a very compelling claim forward and flat earth. Dave does not. All right, let's take another call. Hello. You're off. Hey Danny, what's going on, bro? What is happening? This is Chris. Chris, how you doing, man? I saw you uh, tweeted me some. Uh, honestly, I liked the Orioles thing. Actually, I kind of are you are you betting? Well, okay, one hundred percent. And and uh, just a little tell, tell aside, people because people Rangers. You had Texas well, had Rangers Texas, last year. I had Texas Rangers winning last year. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just going to so, go ahead and saying the odds of a person predicting uh, the World Series champion two years in a row is fucking slim. So if you get this one. I might be a full on Demetria believer. <clears throat> okay, well, I, I think it's going to be Baltimore versus the Braves, but okay, so I'm you think it's going to be Baltimore the Braves is, today? Okay, but because you tied in this Baltimore and the Bridge stuff, yeah, and why you're betting yes, on the 100%. Orioles to win the World Series? Okay, let's hear it. Yes, I was already on the Orioles about two months ago when I started looking because I knew the season was going to start. I'm like, okay, it's going to be the Orioles and Braves. I like the way the numbers lined up, but the Bridge incident today is almost almost guaranteed so first off you have the the owner of the orioles dying two days ago yeah or three days the old owner though not the current owner yeah the the old owner peter angles um his birthday he he died on 323 okay yeah so that was a couple days ago when you write out francis key scott bridge it equals two three three and it opened up on march 23rd Two, three, three. So right there, I'm like, okay, I'm already seeing a tie-in that I'm really, really, really liking. But yeah. I'm going to get into the to the now, ritual side of this because oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 no. keep going. No, what were you going to say? Well, I was actually saying it, but then I actually made no sense. I was saying why? Well, why don't like why do you pick the Orioles versus say the Ravens to win the Super Bowl? Well, I like the Orioles. I, well, I well, funny thing is, I actually did. I, I I did mess up. I did have the Ravens going to the nine versus the Niners with the Niners losing, but I did put that in before the whole Taylor Swift nonsense started. And okay. once that started kind of picking up, I was like, oh, I think it could be. But I stood I stood with it. I just stand by my picks. I mean, not um, a bad, not out. a bad. Yeah, not not still not bad. You had the Niners losing in the Super Bowl. Not bad. Yeah, oh, I did, because I knew the Niners were going to rematch. I just thought they were going to rematch Baltimore. I didn't think they were going to rematch Kansas City. Yeah. But this bridge thing today is very, very interesting, and it's a complete ritual. So first off, like I said, you have the owner dying on the day the bridge was um, initially inaugurated, yeah. and then you have actually have the, brand, the bridge equaling the same day. Now, they say that the accident happened. They're giving us two times. Okay. Wikipedia is saying a 127. Other outlets are saying 128. Okay. Now, Francis Key Scott Bridge also equals 127, which is like 127. Yep. Bridge collapse equals 128, which is like 128. So I'm thinking it's they're they're telling us something because there's no way that the number is so close that there are two different sites. Some people are saying 128. Some people are saying 127. Regardless, I'm like it lines up perfectly with the what's it called with the numbers. But okay. the name of the boat was called the Dolly, yeah. which is named after Salvador Dolly. Okay, and Salvador Dolly has a dream uh, has a uh, a picture called the Broken Bridge and the Drink. The Broken Bridge and the Drink. 
and the dream broken bridge and the dream let's see this thing right here <clears throat> so this okay. so this is so and the ship is called dolly and by the way right on the side of it it's got the number 33 <laughs> and always has to show up <laughs> right on the side of the boat you see the number 33 but here's the, here's another this is how this is how i keep tying it in so yeah. the bridge has been open for 47 years yeah um the the, the owner of the orioles birthday was four seven so he's born on 4-7. The bridge has been open for 47 years. It's hit by Dolly. And from today's date to Salvador Dolly's upcoming birthday would be 47 days. Interesting. So they put this boat in there. They put this boat in there clearly as a ritual for this, this painting, the broken bridge and the dream. Now, Francis Key Scott equals 188, like the Baltimore Orioles equal 188. So you have the Francis Key Scott Bridge who wrote the national anthem and then you or the Star Single Banner. And then you also have think about this. Oh, that guy wrote Orioles that guy win, who wrote the Star Spangled Banner? Francis Key Scott. That's that no, guy he wrote, was, yeah, oh. he wrote the he wrote the national yeah, he wrote the Star Single Banner. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's it's a big it's a big name. So they're they're not gonna take his name off it. I mean, I know one of the Carters said a couple they're definitely not gonna take his name off it, regardless yeah, yeah. of what the past was. Yeah. But so here's the here's the thing. Now think about narrative. If this bridge co this collapse, this is going to cause huge economic turmoil to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. so I, I heard apparently it's a big ship way to route. lift. What would be the best way to lift the city spirits than to have their team win the? Or I I think they're going to the World Series. I'm not going to say they're going to win it. Braves do equal 120, and it's the 120th World Series, and they are the favorite to win. Now, no, the Dodgers I still are the think favorite. it's going to be those. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, Braves Dodgers. are the favorite. No, I'm looking right now. Oh, it, Do Dodgers oh, plus 320, are. Braves plus 450. Uh, it ain't going to be the Dodgers, dude. Everyone's going to be jumping on this Otani thing. It's it's insane. I mean, they're pretty so stacked. It's, this is clearly a, clearly a definitely a ritual with the Salvador Dali, the boat, Baltimore Orioles, the owner of the Orioles just dying. So something to look out for. If people want to get a little bit ahead of the game, put a couple bucks on the Orioles if you're into that kind of stuff. If not, it's all good. I just want to call in and say, hey, check right. it. Oh, and also real quick, can yeah. I also, uh, I have a yes. channel I want to plug. Is Please that all right? So. Yeah. So if, if anyone's curious about the Dimitri stuff, I run a channel called, I just started a couple months ago called Hollywood by the Numbers. So I break down all the deaths from Marilyn Monroe to Sharon Tate to Grace Kelly to, to a bunch of people. My next one's coming out from the Black Dahlia. So if and anyone wants to check it out, if anyone's curious on this stuff, um, check out the channel. It's definitely got a lot of content. It, it, we're growing slowly, cool. but um, you know, it's called what was oh, it? Say the, say one last thing. What, say the name of it. That? Again? Say the name of it again. Hollywood, Hollywood by the numbers. Hollywood by the numbers. Okay. Uh, do you have a prediction for thing. who? Hey. What famous person is going to die next? Um, do I have a prediction for what famous? Uh, not no prediction. Not right now. I'm just looking at the old stuff because I'm trying oh, okay. to show people that hey, this is. I mean, Jared, I'm telling you, you'll and, get a huge bump in subscribers if you can predict who's going to die next. <laughs> well. Well, give me time to look at it and I'll see what's going on. All right. And I wanted I wanted to plug, I have a bone to pick with you real quick. Yes. You made me watch that whole Hannah Gadsby special and I didn't see your set. <laughs> well, <laughs> I I was hopefully figured people thought realized it was a joke, but uh No, I'm joking. Yeah, I'm joking. Know, you know, see know, it came out on three five. Did you get my text about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, my I saw, tweet? yeah, yeah, I saw your yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, on three five. Interesting. Yeah, that was okay. a real stinker. All right, well, that was a real stinker. <laughs> Uh, that's all I know. That's all. <laughs> all right, I know. brother. Good show right. as always, man. Thanks, man. Later. Talk to you. Bye. All righty. Uh, we got a super chat from Logan Sorter. It says, "Question everything." It's pretty good. Pretty good uh, way to live. I think people don't question enough. All right, we're gonna take uh, the final call of the night. Don't forget, we have an after show starting at 11 p.m. where we watch videos that you submit. Uh, it's a fun time. So check it out. Come join me. I'll drop the link uh, shortly in here. Hello. Thanks for calling Low Value Mail. Yes. What's going on, man? Big how's fan. It, how's it going? Who am I speaking with? Good, good. Uh, excellent show so far. Uh, Thank you. So a lot, of, a lot of these folks definitely have a lot to add. I do yeah. not, but I'd like okay. to expand on a couple of things if sure. possible. Uh, first, uh, by the way, I actually called the first uh, number. It was wrong, and I was on the phone with like a direct TV sales page <laughs> for like five minutes. Did you buy anything? <laughs> Anyways, 
<laughs> anyway, yeah, marijuana was involved. Uh, the uh, one of the guys that was mentioning like Jordan Maxwell, uh, or I think Loose Change, or maybe yeah, uh, Iraq for sale. All good. Uh, all great documentaries, films. I'd like to add to the list. Nine uh, Eleven is the new Pearl Harbor. Have you seen okay. It? Oh, you know what? I haven't seen it. I've heard a lot of people mention that one though. I gotta it's, put that uh, it's your five album. hours, but it is a quick five hours. Gotta say, quick uh, five so hours. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a big. Uh, <laughs> That is a big, yeah, no, super uh, interesting. So if anyone else is like looking for new things to do, nine eleven is the new Pearl Harbor. Is that on YouTube or do you have to go elsewhere? Yeah, oh, um, I watched it like two years ago, so it was on then, uh, but probably still is on now. Uh, yeah, YouTube. Um, okay, so it's not so spicy nope. that they took it off. Uh, I hope not. But let's yeah, see the new Pearl Harbor documentary. Oh yeah, I, you know what? I yeah, yeah, this uh, Massimo Mazzucco dude. This guy lives in yeah, Italy. Yep, yep, actually, I was trying to get him on the show. Uh, oh, that would be amazing. But he like I don't. Yeah, yeah. It was like I couldn't find any like English content. Like it's all in Italian. I was just gonna say, does he speak English? I don't think so. I don't think he yeah. speaks English. Yeah, I watched. Yeah, 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 I watched a little bit of this, but yeah, he doesn't speak English. You could have like a Tucker Carlson style uh, interview with a translator. Yeah, yeah, but I found it so yeah. odd, odd that he was doing this nine eleven documentary, and you're like, he doesn't live here and he doesn't speak English. Yeah, right, right, right. It seems like an odd fascination for somebody that yeah, doesn't right. speak English. Uh, secondly, another thing that crossed my mind is uh, you were talking about uh, that stolen car. Uh, yeah, with a air tag. Uh huh. Um, my thing is. I'm wondering if you've got any sort of like input on or anybody listening, whatever. Um, if I have heard and you, you guys know more, uh, it's easier to sort of hack into something. if like you're on Bluetooth and I'm wondering if like, does that, is there any correlation between that and like getting rid of the headphone jack? Um, where it kind of potentially like forces you to be on Bluetooth most of the time, kind of putting everybody on Bluetooth mode. Essentially. Uh... I don't think so. I mean, the only thing I would say is most people, even who have the headphone jack iPhones, because most people like don't know any better and like Bluetooth it just is on by default. Now, maybe there's something yeah, about Bluetooth I mean, always to, like, being on, you... but like my yeah, Bluetooth like... isn't on by default. Like if I'm trying to save my battery, I will turn it off. But most people don't do that. Uh, yeah, but but most people are kind of like sort of just leave it on default i'm wondering yeah, they if leave it any on. Kind of like... uh, i've never heard anything but maybe if somebody knows they can call into the after show and let us know but i haven't heard anything uh to that to that extent where like there's anything uh nefarious about bluetooth yeah mm. uh, i wish i had as much information as all these i wish i knew i'm so sorry i'm cool, sorry cool shit yeah, <laughs> no no sorry. i'm just uh, wondering yeah, yeah shot in the dark here my last question is uh i'm a musician and uh I learned a long time ago that like the uh, uh, the way the music industry sort of structured is you're like you can uh, in the eyes of the law you can get paid as a musician or an artist once the, uh, sorry a songwriter yeah uh, once the one that actually performs the music and one is the person that writes the music and although yeah. it's the same person like in reality in the eyes of the law it's two different people C- comedy is so the same actually. People- Comedy's the oh, same. Oh shit, really? Oh yeah, like like so for because a lot of comics have for Sirius XM radio because we get we get paid uh, for uh yeah. like when they like play your shit. And yeah, yeah. when you get like your like kind of thing. Yeah, when you get your invoice, I actually got it because it was like I actually got it today. And when you get your invoice from them, it's it has you as the artist and the producer. As you as both. Yeah. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of parallels with comedy and music, actually. Yeah, that's interesting. So I was wondering if you thought maybe there's any any merit to the idea that like going from UFO to like AUP or whatever it's called today, if there's any sort of like kind of like legal sleight of hand, because I've noticed a lot more coming out about UFOs or whatever you want to call them, although they're the same thing, they're calling them different names. Idea, if yeah. there's like anything on in that vein or in maybe any listeners that are, I don't know, just maybe to just jog folks mind or something. But I always wondered like, Oh, okay. Everything else is coming out now. Is that just because they like gave it a new definition in the eyes of the law? Uh, I'm not sure. I think like the popularity of that stuff kind of just ebbs and flows a bit. Like people just get more into it and then maybe it's just, you know, people are more into it. And so it just gets more coverage and then it goes away. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I, I that yeah. I'm not that, I don't know, to be honest, I'm not sure. 
sweet. All right, yeah. All Can't right. Shot in the dark, but I'd like yeah. to throw that out there. Thank you, Danny. Right. Thanks for calling cool. in, man. Love the show. Appreciate. Thanks, man. All right, cool. All right, this has been the final Tuesday Low Value Mail ever. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining me on all these Tuesday nights. Next week, we will be Monday night, 9 p.m. Tomorrow night, we got a new episode of The Bathhouse, 10.30 p.m. And then next week, it is at Tuesdays going forward at 9 p.m. And that will allow me to give you more sweet, sweet bathhouse action. And as I was saying that, I just thought, man, that sounds gay. But I already said it. Uh, Join me in the after show, if you will. It's a fun time. We watch videos. It's very different from this. Um, I'm going to post. I'm going to. Where's the link for you here? I was spamming the link before. I should probably have pinned it. But I didn't. And now I'm panicking. I'm panicking. Don't let them see you panic, Danny. There you go. That's the link right there. Uh, check it out. I'll pin it. Uh, I will fire up the stream right when this ends. That one will fire up. I'm going to go take a few minute break, relieve myself. Okay. That's too much information, but, uh, back next week we have, uh, fuck. What's his name? Something donut. Uh, I think his name is donut. It's just donut. He's going to be telling us about all sorts of wacky stuff. I'm looking forward to it. Next week. All right. That's enough. Uh, if you want to help the show out, patreon.com slash low value mail or just join the channel. Thanks for all you guys who, who drop super chats. I do really appreciate it. Uh, it makes me not want to kill myself. No, I'm not going to kill myself. I would never let them win. Them being, I don't know. We'll have to decide later. All right. I'm just rambling now. Uh, all right. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. I will see some of you in the after show. Otherwise, I'll see some of you in the bathhouse. Otherwise, if not, I will see some of y'all. Next week, good night. Really a poet, you know it on my shell rowing. Empathic abilities, yeah, my face be also stoic. Bleep blow up, nigga. That just means I'm working. They see me as a leader, so that's why I'm Captain Kirkin. These charts from the stars, that much is for certain. You can fit this here if you up or if you hurt. I'm raising my stock, not talking my feet and some burkin. Number Johnny Five got a fucking short circuit. Bring the track to life when I spit phenomenal. When I hit, she feel that shit in her abdominals. These rappers make me laugh like comic view, they comic view. You know I got a ball out, I hit the track running just like Sonic do. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. They was trying to get me on my hype shit. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. And they tried to down me on some KO type shit. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. Now we pulling up fresh on some flight shit. Ah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. They was trying to get me on my hype shit. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. And they tried to down me on some KO type shit. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch.